Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Old St. Mary's as we celebrate together on this Monday of the sixth week of Easter. And so we begin our prayer. Christ, having risen from the dead, dies now no more. Death will no longer have dominion over him. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather in prayer, let us acknowledge our sins and so invite God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O merciful God, Grant that we may experience at all times the fruit produced by the Paschal observances. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We set sail from Troas, making a straight run for Samothrace, and on the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, a leading city in that district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We spent some time in that city. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city outside the city gate along the river where we thought there would be a place of prayer. We sat and spoke with the women who had gathered there. One of them, a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, a worshiper of God, listened, and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she offered us an invitation. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed on us. The word of the Lord. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes time on his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. The Lord takes delight in his people. 
This is the glory of all his faithful. The Lord takes delight in his people. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this so that you may not fall away. They will expel you from the synagogues. In fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think they are offering worship to God. They will do this because they have known neither my Father nor me. I have told you this so that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. So once we get through the sixth Sunday of Easter, we are decidedly on one track, and the one track is to the Holy Spirit and Pentecost and the realization of how that's going to reframe and reshape the world. Certainly in our first reading today, we begin to hear about Lydia, and there there is no lack of examples in church history of women and men who have gotten the understanding of the message and have chosen to support the leaders of the church. I mean, even down to today, many of you supporting us as priests, many of you supporting priests and bishops and and all sorts of people. There is a wonderfulness of how God's spirit is spread among the people and how contagious it is. But as we learn from the gospels, Jesus is constantly saying, the spirit is coming, but you also have to pay attention. And so our invitation to pay attention to Jesus, to pay attention to the Holy Spirit. Um, Last week, I was with the fifth graders in class, and uh, they were asking me the simple question that has been uh, the subject of much church debate throughout the centuries. If God is one, is Jesus God? Is the Holy Spirit God? Answer? Yes, okay. <laughs> I think most of you are past fifth grade, but, uh, but explain it. Explain it. And of course, the church has been explaining this, and the great thing about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit doesn't just explain things once. The Holy Spirit doesn't just give you a book and say, these are the answers and these are the rules. Sure, the church has teaching authority and it gives to everyone an an understanding. And what the church does is it it keeps uh, the record of how the community has figured it out over the centuries. So it's, it's really great, but we still have to understand, we, until individually we take it to heart and shape it into our lives, then all the lessons don't mean squat. Because they're, they're just there, they're just sitting in books. Sure, you can look them up, great, but what does it mean to you? And so as, as Jesus uh, talks to us about the coming of the Spirit, When we understand and when we discover that the Spirit is alive in our hearts, then it's what happens with Lydia. She can't stop helping. She can't stop trying to figure out what Jesus is doing in her life and the lives of the community and the people that surround her. And so when when we also hear about the Advocate, the Spirit coming, 
it gives us an understanding of Jesus and the Father and how they all pull together. So, of course, the answer for the fifth grade was that God is one and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. And when you try to figure it out, it gets bigger. You know, axiom one, it's a mystery. And mystery means every time you look at it, there's a lot more to learn, but it keeps getting bigger, and it's God. So we have to keep growing because God is infinite and beyond us, and so how we put it all together. At the very end of today's gospel, it says, I have told you this so that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told you. Throughout John's gospel, Jesus keeps talking about his hour. And finally, the hour comes, the passion, death, and resurrection, the fullness of who he is. But this hour is now the hour that is passed to us, the hour that comes when we see that our turn to proclaim the message of Christ guided by the Holy Spirit is here with us. And indeed, the hour has come. It's up to us to share the message of who Christ is by showing people by how we live and what's in our hearts and how we explain it, how it makes sense to us. Because it's our sharing of our story that makes a difference to other people and their story. May we be blessed in continuing to figure that out and explaining the mystery. And so we raise up our prayers to the God who loves us. We pray for the church as we move toward the time of Pentecost, that our understanding of the message given to us of how much that is meant to be shared by our personal witness, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the world for leaders in the world who will come to see how God's love brings people together rather than how people's actions separate people. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an end to the world at war, for all the conflicts going on in all the different places, that people will see that people's lives are important and at stake and fight against fighting against life. We pray to the Lord. For the people who join us online and the people who are in our community unable to be with us in person, for their prayers, we pray to the Lord. For all those people struggling with medical ills and conditions, for those people seeking, uh, seeking uh, organs for transplant, for those people seeking companionship, for all of them, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, all those whom we love, for all those who mourn. In a special way, we are praying today for uh, the family of and for Miguel Medea Sr. We pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers we have and hold, for all the people we hold dear who have their prayers, for those who have no one to pray for them, for those who do not know how to pray, and for those people at crossroads in their lives today, we pray to the Lord. And we also pray for all those people preparing for graduations, for ordinations to priesthood, for commitment to religious life, for blessings on them, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, accept these and all the prayers that we place before you through Christ, our risen Lord. You are blessed, Lord God of all creation. And through your goodness, we have received this bread that we offer you, fruit of earth, work of human hands. It will become the bread of life. and by the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share our humanity. 
You are blessed, Lord God of all creation, and through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, receive these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are truly holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed too is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, most merciful Father, we ask you, send forth your Holy Spirit, sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice that Christ has handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, 
we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. So having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy, trust, and peace into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Also grant to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our patron, with her spouse, Joseph, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Paul and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As Jesus taught us, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to each other some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O Lord, look with kindness upon your people and grant that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, sharing the gospel this day.